we had disbursed every, the last coin to the constituency development funds. For the first time, we have no arrears for our elderly men and women for their monthly stipend. We found an arrears for eight months for those senior citizens who need that 2,000 to buy drugs to buy food. We have cleared all that. Today, they get their stipend before civil servants are paid. And we have said, let anybody who has an idea on how to fix this economy come and talk to us. I want on behalf of the president to welcome you as ISPAC. Come and talk to our people at the National Treasury and we'll talk, ask you to talk to the president and all of us are aligned. This is our country and as I said, we don't know everything. If you have better ideas than we have, this is our country, we have no other country. Please come and talk to us and whatever you advise us, if it's prudent, if it can get us out of the quagmire that we find ourselves in, we shall say Asante San. So please, you are most welcome. I've heard you talk about pending bills, it's true. The president in his wisdom has put a committee where your members are represented, led by Ouko, former uh, Auditor General, an eminent Kenyan, another group of very eminent professionals. I saw them when the president was inaugurating the team. Men and women of integrity to scrutinize, verify, and validate padding bills so that those that are payable we can pay and put that history of paid in bills behind us. We saw many Kenyans lose their homes. We saw families break up. We saw people commit suicide as a result of pending bills. Government documents became worthless. Previously, during the Kibaki regime, you could walk to any financial institution with an LPU and get LPU financing 50% without a question because the documents had credibility. People knew that you are given a contract by government, it is payable. Today, there is no bank or uh, microfinance institution that will honor an LPO because you supply it two, three, four, five years down the line, you have not been paid. We want to restore the sanctity of government LPOs and LSO and contracts so that they become bankable, that you can walk to a bank and get cash against it to carry out the works that you have been given. So that is ongoing. Again, you have said you have your issues of the remuneration role. You have explained to me there and here. And what we have agreed, I'll create the framework. My office has been tasked by the president the responsibility of coordinating constitutional commissions and independent offices. I'm the one who does that coordination in my office. So we have agreed with the chair. I'll call that forum for you. The attorney general and no other people involved will begin that conversation so that, that like your counterparts, the lawyers and other professionals, you can have your own remuneration role. There is too much competition. Even these lawyers, I can tell you, because some of us have any behavior up here. And to Wali Pile, you have your role. To negotiate, because my wakili ni wengi sana. It is good to have the remuneration role as a benchmark. But you are also many. You have told me you are 35,000. 28,000 are in practice. So mutashindana tu pole pole. So that Kenyans can also get the best deal. So that one I'll do. Again, you have talked about too many regulations. And uh, we'll help the members of the National Assembly are here. The Attorney General is there. We can agree on how to fast track the review of these regulations so that we can collapse them into something that is making sense. So that we don't have too many laws for the same person doing the same thing. So that is something we can help in terms of fast tracking with the leader of the National Assembly in Parliament, with the Attorney General, with our legal drafters. We can work together 
and we can help you to fast track that one. The MP for Molo, uh, KK, my good friend, has said about you people being targeted when there are investigations. It is true. Even the procurement people, you are here crying the same. <laughs> it is true, and it's, 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 it's very sad. And I said, and I want once more to reiterate to ACC and DCI, please hire professionals to be your investigators. Hire accountants, hire procurement people who can advise you on how the investigation is going. You find some of these policemen, they have no idea about accounting. You know? So he, he is being asked to interrogate you and write statements on things that himself he cannot comprehend. You know? I, I, from a personal experience on how absurd our investigative agencies can be when they are investigating complex matters beyond their pay grade. When we were fighting to come to government and the previous government targeted me for persecution because of my political stand, which was very firm, and decided to try to blackmail me to change my stand. They sent CID officers all over my life to look around my life for 50 years and turn it around and see whether they can get something. So I had put some money in a microfinance for eight years. Fixed deposit, 200 million. Money I had earned through hard work, saved, put 200 million, and through good advice by accountants, told me put this money in the fixed deposit and leave for the interest. And I stopped working. I put it, I negotiated for 13%. And every month I was getting 1.9 million, which is money actually I did not need. It's too much. 1.9 million is too much for one person. <laughs> so I was living on the interest. I give a little to Pastor Dokas. You know, she's a pastor, she doesn't need a lot of money. <laughs> so, ingine kidogo, mimi nakula na marafiki. Ingine napereka kwa siyasa kidogo kidogo. So, this money is in my personal account. I put it on a core deposit for three months. So, every three months, it leaves my personal account, goes to a suspense account. It stays there at the end of the three months, in a rudish way, whatever more than interest, I remain with the interest, I reinvest it back. So that movement back and forth, four times a year, a corporal in police said, I have 800 million every year that is coming to the account. <laughs> you know, that movement back and forth. So they calculated for eight years, they said it's 12.4 billion. And they put up a case of 12.4 billion. And it's the same amount of money. The only 200 is the only money. There is no other money. Movement of back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So here, Nangalia Pale, Musho Pale, and the head Pale. Hey. They calculated, they said, this man, in eight years, he has gotten 12.4 billion. He needs to say where this money has come from. But it was the same 200 million. I tried to explain to him. <laughs> but if they had an accountant 